Well, good morning, good Thursday morning. It's a little bit of a brisk, cool morning today, but it's nice to wake up and be able to join you in our uh, daily reading of God's Word. Uh, today, I'm getting ready for, uh, trying to get ready for the sermon prep for this next weekend, and we hit some of my favorite passages in the scriptures. Uh, favorites because of the imagery that we have here. Uh, at the same time, it also reminds us of the reality of the church and how, uh, let's be honest, not always people gain along. Uh, even though we are forgiven sinners and we celebrate that every Tuesday with our garbage day and reminder of how Jesus takes away all of our sins, we also struggle with the fact that we still push our own agendas. We all still want our own things. And even though we are forgiven, we still treat each other uh, in kind of unkind ways. Well, that's exactly what was going on in Corinth. And so when I read 1 Corinthians, I'm like, well, this is, this is Christians at their normal, if you would, both saint and sinner, but also Christians in a, in a not good way. So it's a reminder of how we are to live and, and kind of abide with each other in Christ and uh, showing love and kindness to one another. So I want to share with you a reading from 1 Corinthians 12 and a little bit of a, a reflection on these two. Uh, so the reading comes 1 Corinthians 12, and I have kind of a sword verses because it's a very long passage, uh, verses 12 through 14, verse 21, and 24 through 27. So it begins, for just as the body has one, uh, sorry, for just as the body is one and has many members, and the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all are made to drink of the one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. But God has composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Now I love this passage because it reminds us that we all have our unique abilities yet we're all joined together to make up the body of Christ here in this world. Some are hands, some are feet, some are heads, some are kidneys, some are toes, big toe, little toe, whatever it might be. We all have our gifts, our abilities that God has formed us and created us and, and gifted us with, intending that we'd all work together seamlessly. And like I said, again, the problem is we're all sinful human beings. We are saints, yes, we are declared righteous and holy and pure because of Jesus. But we also still struggle with that lingering sin inside. Because of that, disharmony comes. And disharmony we hear about here is the, the words that uh, we might say to another or people of a body might say. You hear jealousy, you know, I'm just a foot. I'm not really part of the body like the, the hand is. The hand gets to pick up stuff. I get stepped on all the time. Or I'm just a lowly ear. I'm not an eye. I just hang there and sounds go in, but the eyes, they get to see what's going on. So I really don't matter. I mean, it might be jealousy or it might be a ridiculously low sense of self-esteem, which isn't good either. It's not good for the body when you have people not seeing themselves as valued, treasured, gifted, designed people of God to be part of this body. And there's a never, I don't need you. Basically, anyone else, oh, I don't need you. We're all good by ourselves. I mean, that we aren't as Christians meant to be uh, independent and that we can handle ourselves. No, we're meant to be together. Uh, anger, pride, hatred, prejudice, so many things can kind of infiltrate the thinking of us within the body. But the fact is, none of that stuff belongs in the body. All of it is potentially deadly. When a human body starts attacking itself, we call it an immune reaction gone bad. It can lead to hospitalization, even lead to death. And when that happens in the body of Christ, well, it can lead to a death of Christ's church. So what keeps the human body from attacking itself? Well, there are molecules on the surface of each cell that kind of act like an ID. They say to the body, I am you. I'm a good thing. Keep me safe. Don't attack me. Well, what do we have in the body of Christ? We have the unity of the spirit, the bond of peace. 
There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. A reminder of what is it is that joins us together, that unites us, that makes us all part of that same body. It begins in the waters of baptism. As each of us are clothed with Christ, are brought into the body, made to be part of the body. And as nourished and strengthened through forgiveness, through love, through those spirit gifts that unite us together again and again every time we come to worship. So what reminds our immune system that we are part of the body of Christ? It's God's spirit working through us. Because these are the things that make us one body. In spite of our differences, the things that, make, that unite us, that make us one in love. So what should we do when we see conflict in the body of Christ? Well, it's time to appeal to our God, our Father, to send out his spirit to unite us and to unite to our Savior Jesus to make us one in him. Now, he can do that, but we can't. He can take the most wildly different people, people who would never even cross each other's paths in the normal course of events, and he can make them closer than brothers and sisters are. I mean, Jesus has made us one through his death on the cross. That means that all of us are redeemed together. All of us are clean and new and sharing in his resurrected life. Now, he can and he will, through us, fill us with love for one another and for the world that Jesus sends us out to. So when I have been through now 19 years of ministry, experiencing all the things that happen in congregations, uh, the, the struggles, the frustrations, the, the jealousy, the anger, the frustration, the lack of self-esteem. I look back to this Corinthians passage and I go to our Father in heaven and I rely upon him to unite us, to change our hearts as we sing our songs, as we look to him for his source of guidance and reminding ourselves I am baptized. I am a part of the body. I am valued. I am loved by God. And because of that, my self-esteem should be in what Christ has done for me. And that same self-esteem, I keep looking, that's right, there's nobody here, but should be with all my other brothers and sisters in Christ. So what unites us as one is God's word, is God's spirit, is our faith in Jesus Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism one God and Father of us all. That unity, even though it's seen in many ways, it has struggles because we still struggle with each other. We struggle to push our agendas. We struggle with our own views of things. And that's what we have when we have diversity of thought, of, of mind, of, of things, but we should never allow that to fracture and divide, to cause issues within the body. When we do, turn back to the Lord. Turn to him in prayer. And so that was the devotion I wanted to share because of uh, the First Corinthians passage here. I, I really appreciate the, the book of First Corinthians. I've said, taught so many Bible studies on it. I learned throughout each of them so much as well. And it's a great reminder to us to love one another, to cherish one another, to uplift one another, and then to do that out in the world around us. Because what follows First Corinthians 12 is First Corinthians 13. Of what our focus, what our, our, our foundation is in Christ love. Faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these, love. It is that identity that we have in Christ put into action. It's our faith put into action. It's our hope put into action. That four-letter word, love. And so allow that to be your, your focus for this day as you uh, love your uh, family, as you love the family of Christ at, at Galilee or wherever you might be, and as you seek to love others in our communities, in our neighborhoods. Remind yourself that you are the body of Christ. You are his hands, you are his feet, you are his fingers, you are his toes, you are his head, you are his eyes and ears out into the world around us. So let's just uh, bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, we thank you for who you have made each of us to be, that you have baptized us, making us your children, making us part of your body. You have equipped us with your spirit. You have granted us faith and hope in you. 
And Lord, you have filled us with your love. So live through us together, even when there's divisions. Lord, help us to forgive and to love each other and then lead us out into the world to truly show that love in the lives of others. They might, they might know you so that they might receive you through our actions, through our words, through, through our, our kindness. So bless us, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning uh, for a uh, little devotion. Looking forward to this uh, weekend's worship together, and uh, you'll be hearing a much longer reading from 1 Corinthians 12, uh, but it is a, a wonderful reminder to us of who you are, of whose you are, and then that, what that means for our lives together, our lives out in the community. Live, live in the spirit, live your faith, live that love today and every day. Well, I'll let you have a, a good day, cold day. I think uh, the schools are opening two hours earlier, hopefully only that. But have a blessed day. Know that I love you and aloha.